the one thing I want to get into is you've gotten so much love from Apple. You've gotten so much press out of it too. And a lot, some of these questions are about like, how do you go about launching an app? So you want to walk us through some of your launch strategies? Sure. Um, so historically, you know, we were just talking about like differentiated distribution edge. I think historically I've really seen my ability to get press and get featured by Apple as that differentiator. Like it's going to help me launch my app into um, a larger audience right off the bat. Um, even for me with really great contacts that has gotten harder and harder over the years, like, you know, big sites don't care as much about um, apps anymore. You know, like TechCrunch isn't writing about individual apps unless it's just something really interesting. Um, but but the way I've done that in the past is is really just getting good at storytelling. So like you know if you if you go back and search Weather Up and then Weather Atlas before that, it was in like TechCrunch or The Verge and big sites like that um, because I found compelling stories to tell. So like when Weather Atlas, which is we just rebranded it to Weather Up, but it launched as Weather Atlas. Um, when we were releasing that in 2017, there were rumors of the taller iPhone 10. And so I positioned it as and told the story around like we are building this app for the future of devices. And it's really, it wasn't like I just was BSing. Um, so that's Weather Up. If you search Weather Atlas TechCrunch, it'll 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 show you the original launch in 2017. And so the I positioned it as like we're building this app for the future. And it really was true that and I, it says what designed for iPhone 8 because we didn't know it was going to be called the iPhone 10. Everybody just thought the tall iPhone was going to be called the iPhone 8. Um, but but I told a true story. So I wasn't just like BSing or like writing a narrative. Like we saw the rumors and we built an app around thinking about vertical space not being a constraint and mm -hmm. and how would you develop how would you design a weather app where vertical space is a lesser constraint <clears throat> and so if you scroll up you can see that like we built it where you can see the the um radar and the weather mm -hmm. map and the data in the same pane and it's a card interface where you can slope it up and down and so then we built this and then we told the story like hey we built this for the iphone eight iphone 10 and that's interesting right people want to like iphone the rumors around the iphone 8 and 10 that I, around the iphone 8 were really hot at the time everybody's talking about what's apple going to do leaks were happening and everything and so i found a compelling story that was true because I, I don't like you're not going to get very far like bsing a story and trying to pitch it but like if you find something that's going on and have a compelling to story to tell around that, you can get that kind of attention. And then, then that second one that um, the other post that you were showing on TechCrunch was another story around um, just creating a really differentiated feature. So we launched um, calendar events in your weather feed. And so that was like a really unique feature mm. that hadn't been seen. And so when you have a daily driver weather app um, and you introduce something that's really unique, like it, it can get attention because you're telling a unique story that people actually care about because they care about weather apps. Um, so, so my advice would be to look for those interesting stories that you can tell and then um, find ways to pitch those stories around like it, around the audience and why they should care. So like if you're pitching Apple, why does Apple care? Apple cares about pushing their, and you've talked about this a ton, yeah. but I'll just reiterate, but you know, Apple cares about like the new widgets in iOS 14. They're going to care about that. They're going to care about, they cared about AR and pitched and featured a lot of apps around AR. They care about, you know, adopting all these technologies that they're pushing. They care about selling their devices. They care about, making money via subscription. So like being a subscription app, I think does give an edge right now for getting featured by Apple. Um, so it's like you, you think about your audience and if you're pitching Apple, like tell them a story they care about. If you're pitching the press, tell them a story they care about. What do they care about? They care about people reading their story. They care about their audience feeling like TechCrunch is valuable and that they're not just posting random stories about random crap, but actually posting stories that people care about. So you 
and, and so again, like telling a story about this rumored tall iPhone was a compelling, interesting thing that 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 the writer thought their audience would want to read about. So, so, and then when you're telling a story to con customers, like you need to understand in your screenshots, like what story you're telling those customers, where are they coming from and all that kind of stuff. So, so I think that the edge there is really storytelling. And then I, I will say, I've been talking to a lot of developers lately who about how getting in TechCrunch and The Verge and sites like that is probably actually not the best. Like we didn't actually do very well from those stories. Like people, it's just a drive-by thing. It's a huge audience, but like you just don't, don't have just people see it and they're like, oh, another weather app, whatever. Um, where I've seen developers be a lot more successful, um, a buddy of mine runs an RV app and he got a ton of downloads one day. He's like, dude, how do I find out where these downloads came from? Like they just came out of nowhere. And turns out it was a small YouTube channel, or I don't know exactly how many, but it was a relatively small YouTube channel that you wouldn't think could drive the kind of traffic. Like he probably got more downloads than I got from a TechCrunch uh, um, um, uh, story, but it's because it was a very focused audience on YouTube that cared deeply about RVs. And this guy got on and um, talked about this RV app organically because they liked it. And so it drove a ton of downloads. So what I've been talking to, especially like more like indie folks who aren't, you know, funded and don't have a PR rep who can go pitch to TechCrunch and The Verge um, and, and whether or not that's even valuable for a lot of startups is, is debatable. But go after the smaller niche sites and audiences that, um, that really care about your product and then tell them the story that they're going to care about. What would be your advice if you want organic downloads in a short period of time? This is specifically for games. And Sunil says it's the same thing. How do we get started and drive enough downloads in a short period of time? And I think you know, just some rapid fire questions and then we'll get into the app audit as well. What do you think, David? Uh, <laughs> I mean, organics are really tough to get. Like, uh, again, I mean, I think it, it just goes back to a lot of stuff we're talking about, like find a niche that, find a niche that you think you can get attention with. Um, and, and there are, I mean, there are still keywords on the app store that that you can find and target. Like, if there are only you know four or five apps that do some specific thing, like if you can find a you know something an accountant needs that they're that they're actually going to go to the app store and search like you know accounting tool helping or whatever, like it, you can there are still those niches where you can find keywords that are going to organically drive downloads. But if you're in any like even reasonably competitive keyword, you got to look outside of search organics. And so you just got to find a niche where you can get attention in other ways. Like you just, you got to think about the micro influencers and bloggers and like, you got to find a way to, to get the attention to drive those. So, so, I mean, that's, that's uh, organics like word of mouth and things like that. Um, are fed by getting that attention. So, so yeah, you got to start with getting the attention and then, and, and think about, and, and you got to think about too, like the organic funnel, like why is somebody going to hear about your app? And if they hear about it, why are they going to care enough to go download it and, and tell those stories, like have an app that has a story to tell so that people will tell it. I like it. And I can't agree with, I agree with everything you said. And I think what we've kind of broken down through this entire interview has been, look, find the right target audience. It doesn't have to be the biggest. And you have to start that early on. I think too many times yeah. they're like, I'm ready to launch. What do I do? I'm like, when are you launching? Oh, <laughs> tomorrow. I'm like, what? You know, these are yeah. things that you should be doing a month in advance and finding well, and these targeted users. Yeah. And you shouldn't even be, I mean, honestly, like if you're trying to make money, if you're, if you're, if you're a hobbyist and just want to release an app, whatever, just build an app and do it. If you're actually wanting to make any money, like you need to understand your marketing plan before you build the app. Because right. if you build an app that is not marketable, it, like you're not going anywhere. So like start with the marketing, then build the app. What traffic sources are working well for you, David? Um, 
I mean, really, I, I've done very little paid marketing over the years. So it's it's the success I have had, like with my mirror app and with Gas Cubby back in the day with Launching a Pro, it's it's all organic. So like Launching a Pro did really well with um, word of mouth and it did it Launching a Pro got a lot of consistent um, buzz that 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 kept going like it wasn't like i had a big launch and got a bunch of attention and then it just died down it was like people would talk about launching a pro and like videos would pop up on youtube about people describing how they use it and stuff like that that's like really hard to generate but that's i mean again it gets back to like product differentiation marketing differentiation it's like launching a pro was a very unique product and it was a very useful, productive product. And that was in a way it's, it's distribution edge is that it was so unique and helped people that people would talk about it, would blog about it, would, um, and it was, and I mean, funny enough, like it was complex enough that people would do a podcast about it, do these blog posts, do YouTube explainer videos, because it was a, because it wasn't so simple to just download it and like make it happen. And so, so yeah. And then like my mirror app, it was ASO. Like it just, it, I, you know, I was able to latch onto the mirror keyword and just mm -hmm. ride that wave. Um, my weather app has been primarily like getting featured and press, but it's not doing well. So, <laughs> and, you know, it's like, you just can't, you can't rely on those, those kind of sources of traffic. Like as much as you think like, Oh, if I get featured by Apple, like that solves all my problems. It doesn't like you need to find like consistent ways to get attention for your app. And if you can't, it's never going to go anywhere. It's only those that have been featured multiple times. You know, we've helped multiple clients get featured like 34 different clients. And I tell every client, like in the beginning, it was very huge. And I tell them now, it's like, they come to us thinking like, Hey, can you get me get featured? But like, it's not going to make or break your business. Like it's a yeah. nice little trophy again. It's great. It's going to drive some downloads, but at the same time, like you'll be fine if you don't yeah. get featured as well. So I think so many developers make the mistake that it, thinking that they can just go into a competitive market with a better product and that people are going to find it and download it. And Apple's going to feature Apple's featured my apps, the weather up app, like 10 times. It was like app of the day. It was on the new apps. We love it's, I mean, it's been all over the place on the app store. Did that like make it successful? No. And, and like, you gotta, and I mean, so there's, then there's like layers of mistakes that I've made with weather up. Like, you know, I, the monetization is not dialed in. Like we need to do better with, you know, communicating the value props. We, we need better value props. I mean, it's a competitive space. So like people have really high expectations. So anyway, so, so in doing market research, it's like, there's just layers and layers and layers that you need to understand to, to build a successful product in a market as competitive as the app store. And I'm glad you brought that up, David. The, when developers do see like, Hey, this is a crappy app. I can build a way better product on this. I think the most successful indie app developer stories that I've seen that I've actually been able to work with are people who come from the marketing background. Like right. they have an affiliate marketing background. They know Facebook ads they They got that all that dialed in and then they're able to launch an app and the, the product itself is good. Right. Yeah. But the marketing is extremely solid and they've been, that's how they've been really able to sustain that indie app lifestyle yeah. and also just be like, yeah, like really generate millions of downloads and generate millions of do dollars per year. And, and a perfect example of this is actually one of my pet competitors that I have a ton of respect for, and that is uh, Carrot Weather. So he went into the weather space, not just with a great product, which is a great product, but he went into it with a differentiated distribution um, edge. And that this is something, so uh, I, I'm probably going to be building a new app at some point this fall. And the developer I work with on that, he and I have been talking a lot about finding a differentiated distribution angle. So, so what Brian did with Carrot Weather, and funny enough, I actually, I kind of inspired Carrot Weather. I, I tweeted, DM'd him. It's yeah. a, kind of a funny story because he's been so successful with it. And I had a weather app at the same time. And I told him he should build a, like, because he had these uh, a fitness app where it's like it, it 
it, like berated you if you didn't like work <laughs> yeah. out hard enough and stuff like that. And I was like, dude, you need to do this for weather because funny oh, really? or die had funnier die had come out with a weather app. Yeah. I was like, dude, you're like carrot brand would be perfect for weather. Um, and he, he DM me like a month later, he's like, I'm actually building that. And I was like, cool, dude, do it. And so, but what, what this is, is like, he has a differentiated distribution edge. The, the cocky weather robot thing is unique. It's differentiated. It's, mm. it's interesting. People share it. People talk about it. People go to the app store and search carrot weather because they want this like crazy, powerful, sassy weather app that like, and then, but then, I mean, here's an important part. I say that product doesn't, I, earlier I was kind of insinuating product doesn't matter, but it, it absolutely matters because he actually built a great product to back it up. So, so you have a district, you need a differentiated distribution edge, but then you need a great product to back it up because if you have a great product to back it up, you're going to get the renewals. Like, he, I mean, he's had subscribers for like four, four or five years now, like since very early on, because he built a differentiated product and he's continue iterating and adding new features and making it better and better. And um, I mean, he's just killing it. And he's, I don't think he's ever done any paid marketing. Um, you know, he's not super high in like ASO, like searches for weather and stuff. Cause I watch that closely cause I want to be higher in those uh, rankings and stuff. Um, but yeah, he's built a fantastic business. Um, and I, I mean, I don't know exactly how much he's making, but you know, estimates, I, 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 well, I mean, uh, now that I'm at revenue cat and, um, uh, I asked my colleagues, I don't have like direct access to all the data or anything, but mm -hmm. I'll ask my colleague, like, is this sensor tower thing? Right. Cause like I thought <laughs> they were making like sensor tower is, is pretty off. Um, really? And yeah. And I've been able to, to double check it on my own apps and a lot of apps over the years. And, Theoretically, app um, app Annie is better on the accuracy, but I mean, mm. yeah, um, sensor tower can be like orders of magnitude off. So, well, just to close the in the ballpark, though, in the ballpark, he may be in the that thirty k a month range. Thirty k yeah. a month.